A couple of months ago, I made a video about the Sonoff Wi-Fi Smart Switch. It's a $5 device that allows you to turn things on and off in your house using your mobile device. It also integrates with Google Assistant and the Amazon Echo, which means you can control things using your voice. If you haven't seen that video yet, you can check it out by clicking on the card in the upper right hand corner. This channel is still pretty small and my videos don't get a huge number of views, but for some reason that video got over a half a million views. I guess people are really interested in home automation, especially when you can get started for as little as $5. The company that makes the Sonoff switch is called IT. They saw my video and they actually emailed me wanting to support my channel. They make several different Wi-Fi smart switches that have a lot of cool features and they were kind enough to send me three of them. Many people who saw my first video expressed concern about having to cut a power cord and connecting it to the Sonoff Basic. The first model IT sent, the Sonoff S20, addresses this concern by allowing the user to plug the switch right into the wall. There's no need to mess with any power cords. Mine is configured with a plug made for the US, but they make plugs for other parts of the world. This model is perfect for plugging in a lamp or fan. I use one in our bedroom to turn our fan on when it gets too warm. In that first video, I said how cool it would be if the Sonoff switch could monitor and report the power consumption of whatever appliance is plugged into it. I even suggested that I might hack the Sonoff to add this functionality. Almost immediately, people started commenting that IT already makes a model that does this. It has a current sensor built in to measure the power consumption over time. This can really come in handy if you're trying to conserve energy and lower your electricity bill. If you remember my video about the planter box I built, you'll remember that my wife really likes to garden and to grow vegetables. Where we live, you have to start the seedlings indoors until the weather warms up enough to move them outdoors. My wife asked me to build a little shelf with some grow lights where she can start the seedlings indoors until it gets warm enough to move them outside. I thought this project would be perfect for the Sonoff POW. I wanted to be able to put the grow lights on a timer and see how much energy they are using. As you can see, these LED lights use about 17 watts of power. I have them set to turn on at 7 a.m. and turn off at 7 p.m., which is a total of 360 hours per month. At a rate of 6.942 cents per kilowatt hour, running these lights costs me about 42 cents per month. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that information, but it's kind of fun to have. Since I received the Sonoff POW from IT, they have released a new model called the Sonoff POW R2. It has some new features that would be really useful, like reporting the current and voltage in real time, as well as the ability to export the power consumption to a file. Since I'm an engineer, I love spreadsheets, so I'm excited to buy this model and try it out. The last model that IT sent me is called the TH16. This model has the ability to measure and report the temperature and humidity of the room that it's in. You can use this information to turn on and off the device when some condition is met. For example, you could connect this to a humidifier and have the Sonoff switch turn on the humidifier when the humidity goes below 30% and turn it off when it gets above 40%. You could also use this switch to monitor and maintain the temperature in a room. You may, for example, connect it to a space heater and have it turn on the heater when it gets too cold and have it turn off when it gets above a certain temperature. There are lots of applications for this kind of switch. This could be useful if you have a plant or animal that requires certain environmental conditions. I got a ton of questions about the Sonoff switch after posting my first video, many of the same questions over and over. I ended up putting an FAQ in the description of that video to answer some of those questions. Since most people don't even read the description, I figured it would be a good idea to really quickly go over those questions here. All of the links that I'm about to show you can be found in the description of this video. Number one, is this compatible with the iPhone or iOS device? The answer is yes. The iPhone eWe Link app can be found here at this link. Number two, is this compatible with the Amazon Echo? Again, yes. A really good tutorial on how to do this can be found here at this link. Number three, I have an appliance or extension cord that has three wires live, neutral, and ground. How do I connect the Sonoff? This relates to another comment I get quite often that goes something like this. Whoa, that's totally unsafe. You don't have a ground wire connected. You're gonna totally burn your house down. Any appliance that you're trying to control that has a metal chassis should have a ground wire. You can get away with just the live and neutral wires if your appliance has a plastic chassis. You can check this claim by going around your house and looking at the plugs that you plug into the wall. Appliances that have a metal chassis will always have that third prong and appliances with just plastic will have just the two prongs. If your appliance requires that third ground wire, I would suggest getting the Sonoff POW model, which can accommodate that third ground wire. Number four, I don't feel safe modifying an extension cord. Isn't there a Sonoff switch that I can just plug into the wall and it works? I actually answered this question in this video. The Sonoff S20 meets this need and can be found here at this link. Number five, 
Where can I buy these for less than $5? And how long does the shipping take? I actually recommend buying the Sonoff switches from the manufacturer's website, which can be found here. I believe that they ship from China, which may take a couple weeks to get to your house. When I ordered these, they took about two weeks to get to my house here in the US. These can also be found on Amazon, but I've had mixed results going that route. The sellers that have these switches will pop up and disappear within a couple of weeks. It makes it really hard to keep active links here in the description. Honestly, I just recommend sticking with the manufacturer's website. That wraps up this video. Here on this channel, I make a ton of cool project videos like this. If that's something you're into, be sure to check out these videos that I've posted here and click the subscribe button and YouTube will start recommending you more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.